This video was brought to you by Too Long. That's the official TLDR newspaper we've made and which is available to order right now. Americans really do not like their two-party system at the moment. According to a recent poll, only 33% of Americans are keen on a Biden-Trump rematch, with the remaining 67% looking for another option. For many Americans, this option has apparently appeared in the form of Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's inserted himself into the presidential race and proven an unexpectedly potent force. While we're still a year out from the election, so all polls should be taken with an enormous pinch of salt, a Quinnipiac poll earlier this month showed him at a frankly astonishing 22%, with Biden at 39% and Trump at 36%. RFK has also raised a significant amount of money via his super PAC, and Elon Musk has suggested he'd like to support him in some way or another. If Kennedy can convince Musk or similarly minded billionaires, donors and power brokers to back his campaign, he could be a serious potential contender. So in this video, we'll take a look at RFK Jr's background, his policies and how he might affect the 2024 race. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. First of all, who is RFK Jr? RFK Jr was born in 1954 to Robert and Ethel Kennedy, and is therefore a member of the famous Kennedy political dynasty. His father, as well as his uncle Senator Ted Kennedy and President John F. Kennedy, are some of not just the most consequential liberal politicians of the 20th century America, but also some of the most iconic and beloved American political figures in history. JFK has actually seen his favourability increase amongst the public in recent years, and is now viewed more favourably than other former two-term presidents like Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton, who were pretty popular in their time. Anyway, returning to RFK, after attending prestigious universities such as Harvard, the London School of Economics and the University of Virginia, and taking a law degree from the latter, Kennedy set his sights on environmental law and spent many decades trying to use the judicial system to conserve the environment, prevent pollution and move renewables across countries all over the world. In addition to the environment, he's been a strong proponent for indigenous rights as well as a harsh critic of factory farming. Kennedy has also developed a reputation as, if not an anti-vaxxer, at least a vaccine sceptic, and his unorthodox claims have led him to being banned from multiple social media sites. Kennedy has actually been battling against vaccines since the mid-2000s, but his strain of vaccine scepticism only garnered media attention with the Covid pandemic. In November 2021, he published a book, The Real Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, Big Pharma and the Global War on Democracy and Public Health, which again made many controversial claims regarding the COVID-19 vaccine and compared vaccine mandates to the rule of Nazi Germany. In July 2023, he claimed at a dinner that Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people are most immune to COVID-19 and that the virus was designed to, quote, target Caucasian and African Americans. While some data suggests that COVID affects different races differently, Kennedy's speech included the speculative and implausible implication that COVID was a sort of targeted bioweapon. While Kennedy then claimed on Twitter that he never implied that the ethnic effect was deliberately engineered, he still described COVID as a kind of proof of concept for ethnically targeted bioweapons. Kennedy's statements nonetheless drew condemnation from Jewish groups, including the American Jewish community and the ADL. Anyway, controversies aside, what's his policy platform? Well, in a similar vein to Ross Perot's 1992 campaign, Kennedy's policies are a mix of left and right, and in campaign ads, he's tried to pitch himself as a sort of adult in the room by attacking the Democrats and Republicans' apparent divisiveness. On the left side of things, he's voiced support for the Green New Deal, which is a plan to reduce climate change and bring green jobs to the American economy. He wants to restart affirmative action in college admissions following the Supreme Court decision to end the practice in June 2023 and stated that he would sign an AR-15 ban into law if Congress passed it. He's more to the right on immigration, having expressed support for President Trump's policies, and he's been a staunch critic of American conduct in regards to the Russo-Ukrainian war. 
This ideological diversity is why recent polls suggest he'll draw voters from both Biden and Trump, although apparently slightly more from Trump. RFK's appeal amongst would-be Trump voters has provoked many right-wing pundits into attacking him, having supported him when he was running against Biden in the Democratic primary. So lastly, can he win? Well, the TLDR is almost definitely not, for two reasons. First, as we explained in a previous video, for a third candidate to win the presidency, they realistically need to win an outright majority in the Electoral College, which is nigh on impossible. But second, while RFK has put up some pretty phenomenal numbers in a handful of polls, including that Quinnipiac one we mentioned in the intro, and another New York Times swing state poll showing him getting up to 26% in some states, these polls should be taken with a massive pinch of salt. For starters, other polls have put his support far lower, often below 10%. But it's also worth saying that third candidates often do quite well in the polls well before the election, especially when the two main candidates aren't particularly popular. But their poll numbers usually decline as the election draws near. This is largely because voters express their support for a third candidate as a sort of protest. But as the election draws near and voters realise that realistically only one of the two main candidates could win, they pick a side to avoid wasting their vote. There's polling to suggest something similar is happening with RFK. 41% of self-described RFK voters in one poll were unable to identify him in a photo, and instead picked a photo of his father, which suggests they're mainly protest voters rather than actual RFK fans. Nonetheless, even if he's unlikely to win, RFK could still have a massive, even decisive impact on the 2024 race. After all, in 2016, third-party candidates took home 7% of the vote, and Clinton lost. RFK is currently polling higher than any third candidate since at least Ross Perot, and even though his poll numbers declined a bit, Perot still ended up getting 19% of the popular vote in 1992. While Clinton would have probably won against Bush either way in 1992, if RFK ends up getting anywhere near as many votes as Perot, he could swing the election from Trump to Biden. Trump currently enjoys a narrow lead over Biden in head-to-head -head polling, but because RFK is apparently more popular with Trump voters than Biden voters, that could flip if RFK does well enough. If you want more from TLDR and want to support our journalism, consider picking up a copy of our newspaper, Too Long. This is a one-off physical newspaper we've been working on over the last few months, which includes 32 pages of analysis and explainers from the TLDR team on everything from Ukraine and Gaza to the state of the French and German governments or the upcoming elections in the UK, US and around the world. It's not just us either. We have a full interview with creator and journalist Johnny Harris that people who buy the newspaper can also watch via a special QR code. Plus, there's articles from a ton of other creators, including JJ McCullough, Search Party, Sophia Smith Gaylor, and many more. This really has been a very exciting project for us to work on, and hopefully you can already see all the work we've put into it, even the TLDR-themed crossword. So if you want to pick up a copy and help fund our journalism on YouTube as we head into 2024, then the link to the store is in the description. Plus, you can get 20% off your purchase this week only by using code TLDRGLOBAL at checkout. And with a limited quantity available, if you do want one, I'd order soon, especially if you want it before Christmas. As always, thanks so much for your support, and I hope you like this silly but genuinely very good project as much as we do. Thank you.